I'm going to tell you something crazy. Your next car, it's probably not going to be a Ford, a Toyota, or a VW, or even a Honda. And it's going to be built literally right down the road from you. This isn't a maybe, it's happening right now. For over a hundred years, the same car companies have been on top. A huge shift is happening right now, and it's not what you think. China is spending billions of dollars building massive car factories inside Europe and South America. They're not just trying to break through the walls that meant to keep them out. They're building inside the walls. In this video, we're going to break down the insane reason your next car is almost 100% going to be Chinese. Take a look at this feature. Chinese companies are accelerating their entry into Brazil's auto market. Great Wall Motors, or GWM, has now opened a factory in the state of Sao Paulo, following a similar move by Chinese electric vehicle manufacturer BYD just weeks ago. The plant will produce three vehicles, two models of GWM's hybrid SUV and its diesel-powered pickup truck. The plant can produce up to 50,000 vehicles per year. It's a highly automated facility filled with Chinese-built robots, but it also employs 600 Brazilian workers, a number expected to reach 1,000 by the end of the year. The factory was very welcome. It provided a lot of jobs. Everyone is happy with the training we received. Everything is great. Everybody is enjoying it. At first, almost all the parts will be imported, but within three years, GWM says it wants to have up to 60% of its parts sourced here in Brazil. The company's global CEO says creating strong ties to local markets is central to GWM's global strategy. Gridwell Motor actively participates in global competition and sticks to these principles. Production and sales localization, cross-cultural branding and ensuring safe supply chains. From exporting products to now exporting our ecosystem, we empower the local economy with a whole production chain layout. Brazil is a very important market. This is the third country that receives a plant from GWM. So uh, the investment from in Brazil is very strong from GWM and we have more than Brazil, we have the all South and Latin America. So it's a very important country and Brazil is a kind of hub for all these regions. So the inauguration was a Let me pause right there because for our entire lives, the car world has been dominated by a few mega companies. America had Ford and GM, Germany had VW and BMW, Japan had Toyota and Honda. And these guys were the kings of the automotive market. They controlled literally everything. They told you what to drive, how much you had to pay, and what tech you got. For generations, their power seemed unbeatable. But you've probably felt this somehow. The whole thing right now is starting to break. New car prices from these guys have gone insane, but the cars are kind of boring. You're getting the same thing every day. You're paying way more money for less. The same old screens, slow software, and you have to pay a fortune to get the good features. Millions of people are angry right now, and that anger created a huge opening for someone to actually completely flip the entire game on its head. While we were all arguing about paying another thousand bucks for a bigger screen, Chinese car companies did something else no one saw coming. People used to laugh at them, call them copycats. Well, nobody's laughing right now, and they're leaping ahead attended both by Brazil's Vice President Geraldo Alckmin and President Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva, who emphasized Brazil's close ties with China amid global trade disputes. We have a very strong relationship with China, which is our main trading partner. I will fight for a balanced world trade. We don't want a unilateral system where one big country suffocates the smaller ones. Cars are already rolling off the assembly lines as Great Wall Motors strengthens Brazil's auto industry and deepens ties between Brazil and China. Paulo Cabral, CGTN, Iracemápolis, Brazil. But the numbers are just crazy right now. In the first half of 2025 alone, China exported over 3 million cars. But here's a plot twist. The West tried to stop them. The US slammed a tariff of over 100% on Chinese EVs. The European Union hit them with tariffs that can be over 35% and that should have been game over for them. But China's strategy is just genius. They're not trying to smash down the wall. They're just building their factories on the other side. This is the 500 IQ move that changes everything. BYD, a giant Chinese EV company, is building a massive factory in Hungary. In Europe, 
the first cars are scheduled to start rolling out in late 2025. And think about that, not imported, but made in Europe, which means they can sidestep the EU's big tariffs. And this is not just some tiny test. That one factory can build up to 300,000 cars in one year. And they're just getting started. BYD just signed a $1 billion deal for a factory in Turkey that will build 150,000 cars a year starting around the end of 2026. They are building more factories in Brazil, Thailand, and Indonesia. And to get around the huge American tariffs, they're pouring billions of dollars into Mexico, creating a secret backdoor into the US market. This isn't just about selling cars, it's about taking over the entire system from the inside. So how is this even possible? How can you build a brand new factory in Europe, pay European workers, and still sell a car for way cheaper than anyone else? It's because they've completely changed how you should make a car. It's actually three secrets. First is speed. A normal car company takes years to develop a new car. These Chinese companies can launch a brand new vehicle in the time it takes the old guys to do a minor update. And that's just insane. Second is the cost. And this is a big one. They have figured out how to build new factories for 40 to 50% cheaper than their competitors. That's half the cost. This lets them expand globally super fast. And third, and this is the most important secret, they own everything. A company like BYD doesn't just put cars together. They own their own lithium mines. They make their own incredible blade batteries. They design their own computer chips. While Ford or VW are trying to buy parts from hundreds of different companies, BYD owns the entire supply chain. And it's like you're trying to build a Lego set, but your competition owns the Lego. This gives them a massive permanent 30% cost advantage. And this isn't just a business plan. It's an economic super weapon. And it lets them give you what you actually want. An amazing car packed with tech for a price that feels real. This is literally one of the biggest business plays in history and it's happening right now under your nose. If you think this is crazy, hit that subscribe button because what's coming next is even bigger. So what happens next? The entire car world gets turned upside down. It's just a year or two. When you go to buy a car, their choices will look totally different. It won't be a Ford versus a Toyota. The best car with the best tech and the best price might be a BYD or an MG and it will have been built right there in your region. This puts the old car companies in a debt trap. They either have to slash their prices and lose all their money or they become the next Nokia, a brand that everyone used to love but got completely destroyed by a faster, cheaper and better competitor. This isn't just some crazy prediction for 2030. This is happening right now. The first wave of tariff-free European-made Chinese cars is right around the corner. The game has already changed. We're just watching the new champions run onto the field. For a hundred years, the car industry played the same game with the same rules. Today, those rules were just thrown in the garbage. The real reason your next car will be Chinese isn't because of a flood of cheap imports. It's because they're pulling off the ultimate strategy of building an empire from inside their own rival's territory. They are dodging the trade wars and winning the fight for the future of the car from the inside out. So I have to ask you, if a Chinese brand car was built in your country and was better and cheaper, would you buy it? Let me know in the comments below. I read all of them. And if you never want to miss these insane global changes, smash that subscribe button and turn on the notifications. Thank you for watching and I will catch you in the next episode.